man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Pastor Sam May here with Deliverance Bible Church Tacoma, Washington, coming to you this this Wednesday evening, this 22nd day of November 2023, and we're so glad to be you with us this evening. Hey, listen, uh, if you're coming in to be with us this evening, uh, Wednesday the 22nd, uh, tomorrow is uh, Thanksgiving Day, so let me wish you a happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow. If you're getting this broadcast on a delayed basis, you're not getting it on Wednesday, 20, the 22nd of November. I want to wish you, I hope, hope you had a happy Thanksgiving with all the trimmings and everything. But most of all, I hope you took time to tell God thank you, uh, not just for the uh, material stuff, but for keeping you, for watching over you. Uh, we did a series of talking about being grateful this time of year for his unfailing love in your life. It's because of his unfailing love <clears throat> that we have his grace, his mercy, his compassions. They fail not because he loves you the way he loves you. So whatever it might be, if this is the day before Thanksgiving, make sure you thank God tomorrow for all the great things and every day giving thanks. If it's after Thanksgiving, thank him anyway. So whatever day you might be getting this broadcast, give God thanks. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. And we want to remind you also that uh, we do come uh, Wednesday evenings. We're on uh, Facebook, our DBC Tacoma Facebook page at 7 p.m. But we're also on our DBC Tacoma uh, YouTube page at 7 p.m. So whenever time you get this, again, if you don't get on Wednesdays, you can still go back and get the uh, the lessons because they are recorded and you can get them later on, whatever it might be. And let somebody else know also. They might not be able to get to Facebook, but most people can, can get to YouTube um, that they can get. You can share this word with them or even if you're here now, um, give them a shout out. Uh, what is that thing? Share this, however you do that, that uh, DBC Tacoma is... Um, bringing a word from the Lord this Wednesday evening. So we bless him and we thank him for his kindness. Pray with me if you would. God, you're awesome and you're mighty and we lift you now. We can't thank you enough. We we talk about Thanksgiving, but we should always give you thanks. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Uh, we appreciate what you do, uh, attitude of gratitude, and we thank you as expression of our lips. And we praise you. We speak well of you. We brag on you because you are the one true awesome and mighty God. So we say thank you. Right now we say thank you for uh, life, health, and strength. We thank you for provision. We thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus who gave his life that we might have life. And he died in our place. He rose from the grave. And now, even now he speaks on your right hand side as our advocate and intercessor. So we just say thank you. Now, I pray that you would help us tonight in your word, increase our understanding on, on life and how you want us to do life, because it's really for us now understanding how you want us to do life to your glory. Bless you now. Praise you now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we, we bless God for allowing us to come back to be with you once again in this Bible study, uh, this particular uh, venue, uh, this particular uh, medium for a Bible study. We're uh, yet in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, we made the chapter 4, y'all. 1 um, Peter chapter 4. And, and again, I just want to just quick, uh, quickly say 1 uh, Peter has, Peter has is concerned about the, uh, the believers and their suffering, their faith, they're emphasizing them that they're going to suffer because of their faith. They're going to suffer because of their living for Christ, not necessarily because they're doing anything to anybody. 
but you and I need to get this, that living for Jesus will bring persecution. Jesus said, if you persecute me, they'll persecute you. So this is a part of our life. But Peter wants to encourage them through, through this book. Uh, this first uh, book of uh, Peter, we call it the letter, first letter that he wrote here, that uh, don't don't give up, don't give out, don't give in. Uh, it's a part of life that we will have difficulties in life because we are serving God, but God is with us. Listen, God's with us, and God is getting us through this thing. Okay, so let's go in tonight, and I want to First Peter chapter four. We'll read. We'll look at verses one through ten. I just call. I just entitled this one suffering. In living right, suffering in living right. Let, let's just go in. Oh, by the way, and you can't get your notes. I, I didn't say it earlier. You can get your notes off of our DBC Tacoma Facebook page. We post the notes for you. We try to get them up there early. So by the time you get to the broadcast, that you can have the notes. You can you can copy them, uh, print them out so you can make other notes on the notes. Okay, so let's go in. First Peter uh, 4, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2, then I, I want to talk about that a little, talk about a little bit, bring this out. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, the same attitude, same mind of Christ. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. For the less of men, but for the will of God. Listen, suffering for living right in God confirms that you have turned from a sinful lifestyle. He mentions Christ's suffering in the flesh for us. Then he says that we're going to suffer in the flesh. But our suffering in the flesh is different from Christ's suffering for us. He suffered in the flesh for us. He gave his body for us that we might be forgiven of our sin. Listen to this. Christ died. He suffered in the flesh that we might be forgiven of our sin. But our suffering in the flesh is an indication uh, that we are, are turning away from sin. Okay, listen to this. Um he, he says in 1 Peter 3, 17 earlier, he says, for this, for it is better if it is the will of God, if many times in the uh, Greek language uh, could be since, since, if or since it be the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Now, now understand when the, but when he talks about doing good, he's not talking about, um, you know, just what uh, we did a good thing. He, he's really talking about here about doing good in the Lord, doing right in the Lord, living for God, doing good, living for God. He said to be 17, he says it's better to suffer for doing good, living right before God than for doing evil. Doing evil is not living right before God. So that's part of what we deal with as believers. Okay. Suffering in the flesh for doing good is in the will of God. But, but don't miss this though. He says here that suffering in the flesh for doing the will of God, that means that you, you're refraining from sin. He says, I'm sorry, back up in verse one. He says, uh, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That word ceased there means to refrain from. Now listen, we know we're not perfect. <clears throat> we know that we do sin, but listen, we should not be sinning like we used to sin. Okay, before, before, before this, before this, sin was a regular activity of the believer. We just sinned. We were, we were sinners, sinners, sinners. We were sinning. We were sinners, okay? But now that we've come to Christ, uh, <coughs> sin should no longer be the direction of our lives. Listen, the major direction of your life now should be to follow Jesus. That should be the major direction. But listen. A change in direction can also cause, bring about difficult, difficult times. Why? Because when you get serious about following Jesus, listen to this, the devil is serious about attacking you. That's good. When you get serious, I'm, I'm not talking about talking about following him. When you, I'm talking about when you, see, when you're serious about something, you do so. You, there's something, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about that. How do you know you're serious about it? Because it shows up in what you're doing. Okay, when you get serious 
about living for Jesus Christ, the devil gets serious about attacking you. Listen, suffering, the persecution, you know, uh, we said before um, that uh, we should expect persecution. Jesus said, expect it. He said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. We, we saw earlier um, uh, in another lesson that we had where uh, we looked at Matthew and Jesus said, you're going you're gonna to suffer. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to suffer for righteousness sake. People are going to be on your case. We're going to see this in a minute. I won't get too far down there. But um, the, the enemy, listen, Satan is your enemy. Okay. He don't like you. You, he, he, you, 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 you was all right when he was walking with you. He didn't have to mess with you because you just did it naturally. He didn't, he didn't have to go through a whole lot to, to mess with you, uh, to get you to sin because it was natural. But when you became a child of God, as the old folks, you said, when you were born again, born again, became a child of God and listen, and you change your way of living. Listen, God is calling for us to change our way of living. Okay, uh, 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 as, as, as Peter said, that we've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. We, we live one way in darkness, in darkness, in sin. Remember, darkness is about the kingdom of, uh, of, of, of Satan. Light is the kingdom of God. And Peter said we've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. There's supposed to be a lifestyle change. We're supposed to be working on it. you got to work on it. Because the enemy is going to try to keep you from, from moving forward in your walk in the Lord. Okay, so it's going to happen. But as you as you strive to move forward in your walk in the Lord, to, to refrain from sinning, okay, to no longer live a sinful lifestyle, the enemy is going to come against you. Because he knows. He Listen, why? Because he doesn't want you to be a right influence in the life of other people. So he will do what he can. We'll, we'll talk about this in just, just a minute here. He'll, do, he'll bring people against you. He'll bring people against you to try to keep you from doing what you ought to do in the Lord. But don't miss this. When that's happening, that is a confirmation that you are striving to do the right thing in the Lord. Striving to do the right thing in the Lord. When it comes, when stuff comes against you, that's a confirmation that you're striving to do the right thing, the right thing in the Lord. In verse two, he says again that he should no longer live the rest of his time. No longer, no, no longer talks about not doing what you used to do. You no longer do this. You no longer do that. I, I did that, but I'm, I'm moving away. I'm moving away from that. No longer live the rest of his time in the flesh. Watch this now. Rest of his time here on earth. In the, fle in the flesh now is the rest of the time here on earth. Listen to this. Uh, for the lust, the lust of men, but for the will of God. Please notice the change, the change, the change. This is, uh, uh, this is the major direction of your life should be to follow, follow Jesus. Look at the change in there, he says. He says, you're, you're suffering the flesh. You, 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 things come against you because you're living with Jesus Christ. The suffering, remember, and he said to them earlier, don't be surprised about the, the fiery trials, the difficult times that are coming because you're living in Christ. These, these times are coming to prove, to test, to prove your faith that it's the real deal. He says, listen to this, that you no longer should live the rest of your time in the flesh, listen to this, in this life, for the less of men. So there was a time, and we'll see it in a minute, there was a time when we lived our lives for the less of men or for or, or the way of Satan. We'll see that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I'm not trying, I'm trying to get too hit of myself here. There was a time we lived for the less of men. We lived like everybody else who didn't know Jesus as Savior. But there's supposed to be a switch here. He says there's this switch here. There's this change here. And that we now live for the will of God. What is that? The less, the less of men is about living, uh, 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 in in con living contrary to God. I'll put it that way. But when we live for the will of God, now we're living contrary to the less of men. And when you do that. You're going to suffer. When you do that, you're going to be rejected. When you, when you do that, there's going to be difficult times. And he wanted to, in their difficult times that they were in, 
you know, they, they Christians were being martyred and they were being uh, persecuted and many of them were losing their lives because they were living for Jesus. He wanted to encourage them, look, this it would come. This comes with living for Jesus, but this also shows that you are living for him. You're suffering in the flesh because you're living right. That's a confirmation that you're living right. It's a confirmation that you no longer live for the lusts of man, but you are now living your life in the will of God. Do we do that perfectly? No, but the direction of our life needs to take a shift. Yes, we sin, but we shouldn't make sin a, a routine. You know, before it was sin was routine. Before sin was routine. Before things that went on in our life, the way we handled life, it was routine. But it shouldn't be anymore because uh, we, we, we should have a new direction in our life now. And listen to this. Uh, the major direction of your life should be to follow Jesus now. To be, if you would, in the will of God, and you you won't listen. Here he is. You you can't be in the will of God without knowing the Word of God. So a lot of people want to be saved, and um, they don't. They get it. You got to be saved. Saved. Being saved comes from the Word of God. The Word of God tells you about salvation, but you also after salvation you're supposed to be living in. God wants you to live in His will. Okay. And you, we have to make an effort of that because the enemy's going to come against you. The enemy's going to come against you, try to dissuade you, whatever. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm really running on here ahead of myself. Okay, so, so the first issue is suffering for living right in God confirms that you have turned from a sinful, don't miss this, lifestyle, a sinful way of life. It's going to happen. You're going to suffer, but it confirms that as Jesus suffered in the flesh for our for our sin, we're going to suffer in the flesh because we have turned from sin. Okay, all right. So let's move down then a little bit further, um, if you would. Verses four through. I'm sorry. First uh, Peter four verses three through six. And I'm kind of I'm going to kind of break this up. Okay, so. Um, Non, the, the non-believer will be surprised and scorn you because of your new lifestyle. Some of y'all have seen this already uh, in your life. You recognize that the non-believer will, will be surprised and scorn you because of your new lifestyle. Let's, let's start here at verse 3 and work our way through this, okay? For we have spent enough of our past lifetime, 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 lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. Now, don't miss what he said earlier. He said, um, he said, we should no longer spend our time in the flesh for the lust of men. Now he calls it, if you would, doing the will of Gentiles. Remember, he said, we've turned to do the will of God. He said, when we were living for the flesh, if you will, if when we were living for the lusts of men, listen to this, we were doing the will of the Gentiles. And please notice what Peter says here. He says, for we, Peter understands, we. One of the things that Paul often wrote when he often said, when he wrote to the church, he said, we, he included himself. Peter doesn't say for you. He says, we, because all, listen, listen, here you go. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not y'all have sinned, but all have sinned. And so Peter, in encouraging them uh, in their walk, to, to keep walking the way they're walking, he did, he's not saying y'all did that. He said, I, I, he's included himself in this. For we have spent enough of our, listen to this, here you go, past lifetime. Past lifetime your past lifetime is your past and in your past we did the will of the gentiles we did the will of the gentiles okay now what he does then is he gives us if you would a list of some activities some activities some activities he, he, this is not an exhaustive list you I don't think you could find one passage that gives us an exhaustive list. As a matter of fact, when Paul talks about it, uh, Paul himself talks about it over in, um, when he talks about the flesh wrestling against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. 
and um, he he mentions uh, the works of the flesh are uh, manifest of these. He mentions a whole bunch of things, and then at the end of it, he says, "And the like, and the like," which means I ain't named them all, but you know, you you get a pretty good idea um, in uh, in in talking about it. Okay, so so understand this then that um he doesn't give a total exhaustive list but you know he does he does talk about some things here peter and peter talks about we listen let's look at this thing he says we spent um our past lifetime doing the will of the gentiles when we walked here it is walked or participated in or had a lifestyle walk and the first one is lewdness lewdness is simply without self-restraint unbridled passion without self-restraint unbridled passion whatever it was we show no restraint in going after but don't miss what he says he says we did the will of the gentiles and earlier he said that it was uh uh in the flesh for the less of men so this could have been uh, you know uh, this um, um, spontaneous uh, uh, sexual rendezvous or something whatever you want to call it. just stuff it was just it was no self restraint if we if we saw it uh, we went after it and we w went after it with passion with passion with exuberance anyway let me move on for lust evil desires a longing for that which is forbidden no those you know to kind of run together when you're talking about a longing for that which is forbidden okay and and lewdness without restraint we go after that which was uh, which was forbidden without self-restraint there's a passion for it to go after it, lust evil desires these are uh, um, 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 desires of the flesh uh, these are okay these are uh, desires of of the gentile these are this is the will of the gentile to go after it and a lot of these things that we see here is really about self living for self uh drunkenness drunkenness this is overindulgence for them uh it was mainly wine but for us it's not just wine but it's also alcoholic beverages we have a a, a menagerie of, of alcoholic beverages today that uh, that uh, people um, get drunk on get get drunk on um, I, back in the day um, there was phrases like and, it, and a lot of it was intentional I'm gonna get my head bad old school they would say I'm gonna get my head bad that means I'm going to drink until I act whatever or I'm gonna tie one on and there's and there are actually people who watch this bragged about how much they drank the next day bad day for woo oh i really i i, I tore one up I, I tore myself up last night I, I i drunk myself into whatever last night I actually do that and they and they, they 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 announce the intention of doing it i'm gonna tie one on and then the next day they brag about tying one on they 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 announce the intention of uh getting their head bad and then the next day they brag about it drunkenness drunkenness and you know uh some of us can relate being there or seeing there uh drunkenness is is not a pretty sight people do stuff when they get drunk they don't normally do uh somebody says that they're they're, they're they become uninhibited and they do stuff and they say stuff uh, when they're drunk and they say, "Oh, that's the liquor." The old school, they just say, "That's the liquor speaking." No, that was that was the person speaking. That that liquor had just broke something loose that was in there already. <laughs> no, but drunkenness, tying one on, getting your head bad. Okay, this was. Don't miss this. This is in the will of the Gentiles. This is this is walking after the of the flesh. That that which is contrary to God, drunkenness, revelries, revelries here is carousing, rioting, and even uh, uh, sexual immorality uh, and, and, and orgies, sexual immorality, orgies. We see this still all, all over the place, um, um, sexual immorality everywhere. 
um, and in, in some place is is it's legal. You know, here's the thing they say: well, as long as the two consenting adults, okay, they all that other stuff, and you know, all all that stuff that goes in that carousing around, hanging around, carousing around at night and stuff. You know, this this is this is revelries, and there. Let's be real. Uh, as we're talking about this, there was a fleshly enjoyment to it. That's why we kept going back to it. A lot of stuff that we did, it it was it was it was it was appealing to the flesh. It was appealing to appealing to the flesh. It was appealing to where our minds and emotions were at that time. That's why we go back. That's why people look forward to getting drunk every weekend. They wouldn't do it during the week because they had to get up and go to work. But it's Friday night, people get towed down. People get towed down. They look forward to it. So uh, the revelry is orgies. Uh, listen, drinking, drinking parties. This is banqueting, or if you would, drinking bouts, drinking bouts. We we hear this, um, uh, see this sometimes, and sometimes even we see this keggers, keggers with the college kids on campuses. Um, we see this sometime when people are celebrating something, they go to a lounge or a bar and they literally, they have drinking contests and the contest is to see who can, if you would, who can hold the most liquor, who can hold the most, you know, they shot glasses and they're matching each other shot for shot to see who, who's going to win, who's, well, they have the winner, who's going to give in the quickest. Uh, drinking parties, you know, I can hold more. And they boast of that too. They buy, I hold more liquor than you, or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that, that's, that was the role. Peter says, this is, this is how we lived. P Peter said that this, this, this is the, this is the will of the Gentiles. We walked in this stuff. We, we, I look forward to this stuff. You know, we look forward to doing these things. We look forward to going back and doing them. And the, and the challenges, the cha it, it, it's almost like the challenges of being a better, who, who's going to be the better center? Who's going to be the better, okay? Look forward to it. Look forward to it. And so, um, and then this is called abominable idolatries where, where all idolatry is about the worship of idols. Right. Every every idolatry, the forbidden worship of idols, all idolatry is about the worship of idols. And you know what that is? That's having anyone or anything in place of God. And listen, y'all, listen. When we ran that way, we, it wasn't about God, okay? Because we were outside of God, okay? When we ran that way, God was not on our minds. Now, and I'm going to say this. I don't, I don't mean no harm here. But some of us, after we got saved and we were not growing in Christ, we still had other things in, 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 in place of Christ. Still had other things in place of Christ. Some of us were hanging on Sunday morning. I'm sorry. We were hanging or we were in church on Sunday morning and we was hanging everywhere else during the week. Okay. That, that's where we were. We were, because you got to grow in the Lord. You got to, uh, he says that we 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 refrain from we cease from sin but refrain from sin uh, that didn't happen all all of a suddenly as little boy said all of a suddenly that didn't happen right away we got it. we have to grow in this thing but in your walk in your walk we should be growing out of all that stuff he here's what he says he said we have spent enough of our past lifetime doing the will of the Gentiles. Remember earlier he said that we suffer in doing the will of God. Okay, so we need to be in the will of God. And again, this list is not uh, exhaustive. Okay, this list does not mention everything, but you know it. It's it's a pretty pretty good list. Paul Paul put it this way, uh, with Peter saying. Um, about our past lifetime. Paul put it this way in Ephesians chapter two, uh, one through three. He says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins and which, which you, here you go, once walked, once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Watch it, verse three. Among whom 
also we all, here we go again, once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. Notice what he says. I just want you to highlight a couple of phrases that he says in verse 2, which you once walked. Once walked is past tense. Once walked. Um, in verse three, he says, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves. How you conducted yourself is, is your way of life. When you, um, 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 how you conduct yourself, your way of life. He said, this is how we used to be. Listen, he says, um, this is the way we were. But when you come to Christ, he no longer supposed to be living the way you were he said back in first peter he said we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the gentiles and so the idea is when you when you turn from sin you're going to suffer for turning from sin okay and what you've done is you stop doing the will of the gentiles you are now living if you would, in the will of God. You're suffering for that. You're suffering for that. But let me just read a little bit more because um, I told you I just want to open up verse 3 for you to give you, a, you know, try to open up the sense of verse 3. Now, he says, uh, and here it is, the non-believer will be surprised and scorn you because of your new lifestyle. So here's the new lifestyle here in um, verse 3. He says, we don't, we don't hang that way anymore. We, for verse three, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime. In other words, changing our life now. We change the direction of our life. We're not um, in that stuff we were in before. Okay, it's a changed life. Um, um, I think, who was it? Um, I can't remember who sang it uh, originally, but uh, um, Hawkins. I can't remember the first name, y'all. You know, a change, a change has come over me. Then um, I later on, um, I can't think of uh, the other lady anyway. She came back and she she, she sang it again. She said, uh, he changed my life and now I'm free. He changed my walk. He changed my talk. Uh, he changed me. See, there ought to be a change. There ought to be a change. Doing things differently. Doing things differently. We're not living like we used to live, okay? But now, the non believer will be surprised and scorn you because of your lifestyle. So, in verse 3, he mentions uh, some, uh, some of the areas of the lifestyle we used to live. We told you, Paul said, we once walked that way and once conducted ourselves. Now, watch verse 4 because verse 4 it really gets me back up to, to, to the title I gave you, the, the point I gave you for this. In regard to these, in regard to what? In regard to the things he just mentioned, watch now. They think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They who, the Gentiles, they, listen, they who, the people who you used to hang out with, they will, they think it's strange or they're surprised, think it's strange that you don't run with them the way you used to run with them in the flame, same flood of dissipation. This is about overflow. This is, just, this is going at it full speed. And he says, speaking evil of you, that, listen, you're no longer self-indulgent. You're no longer wild in the flesh. You don't live in depravity. You, you no longer live a, 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 a corrupted, corruption, corrupting lifestyle. You're no longer living this sinful immorality lifestyle. You're no longer making sin a way of life. And he says that they will be surprised, but they will also speak evil of you. This is part of the suffering. Again, you're living for Jesus. You're now participating in those things that... Um, uh, you used to participate in and those who are still participating in those things, they're going to be surprised, but they're also going to speak evil of you. Um, it, you know, we often talked about, people often talked about when you, you know, when you hung on the streets and you did whatever and then um, you go back 
And the people on the street, you go back on the street, not to live on the street, but you go back, you go back on wherever it might be. And the people see you and they're surprised that you're not doing what you used to do. They're surprised you don't drink like you used to drink. You ain't chasing the women. I'm just talking, or the men. You know, if you're, if you're a man, you just chase the women. And the women, they, they, women did chase men. Women, women, even though the men were chasing the women, the women... Uh, ran fast enough for him, quite not to catch them, but slow enough to keep him interested. Okay, I better leave that alone. Okay, all that stuff up in there. But all that stuff, all that stuff that you used to do with them, you don't, they're surprised. But also, listen, they'll talk about you. They'll talk, listen, when you're living right for Jesus, people will talk about you. They will speak evil of you. You say, I don't do that no more. Who you think you are? What you mean? You don't do that no more. You think you're special now? Who you th who you think you are? You that holier thou, that holier thou attitude. You 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 ain't no better than me. You I don't know who you think you are. You coming right here? I I remember you and now you coming right here. Act like one of them Jesus freaks. Are you want to talk about Jesus and live for Jesus? See that that's where they go on you, okay? They'll they'll go there on you like that, okay? Uh, they think you think you're too good. And they'll bring up your past. They're, whew, man, they will bring up your past. I remember when. You remember when we went? Um, I said, you, 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 you trying to act like you never been there? That, you know, I was there. I did do that, but I don't do that anymore. See, listen. Why is it that the enemy wants uh, to use people against you because he wants to dissuade you? Okay, he, he wants to, he wants to uh, 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 get you to the point where it's like, you know, it's, it's too difficult living right because of all the stuff that's coming at you. And he'll use people. He will use people to come against you. They will speak evil of you. Don't miss that. They will speak evil of you. You haven't done anything to them you have not done anything to them but as mom and them you say they just don't like you because they don't like you they 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 don't like the way you're living anymore they don't like how you're coming across anymore they don't like you so they come at you they come at you now they come at you now so okay so so now so so watch this listen to this he says that they will speak evil of you Watch the rest of, I'm sorry, verse five. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Listen to this. This is, this is why you don't get all bent out of shape when folk come funny at you. Listen, they got to give an account to God. They got to get, they got to give an account to God. So here you are living for Jesus. Uh, doing what you should do for Jesus and people are coming at you funny. He says they got to give an account to God. They don't have to account to you. They have to give an account to, 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 to God who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So don't, don't, don't get, uh, don't be discouraged. Here, 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 here's where he's trying to get to again is don't get discouraged uh, if in your living right, people badmouth you. Don't get discouraged if, oh, I should say when in your living right, people start dogging you out, reviling you. He had talked about that earlier about uh, people reviling you, speaking, speaking bad of you. That's just, that's an indicator you're living right. Okay, that's just showing that you're trying uh, to get your life right in the Lord. That's that's all that is. It's just showing that. So don't get bent out of shape and everything because people are coming at you funny. Okay? That's going to happen. But remember, they're going to have to give an account to God. And verse six, verse 6 says, For this reason the gospel will preach to those who are, who are dead or have already died, that they may be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Listen, listen to this, listen to this. There, there were Christians during that time who had been martyred, killed. Remember I told you before about uh, they were being persecuted, crucified, all kinds of things for their faith. They had been martyred, killed for their, their faith. Okay. 
uh, they were killed for their faith. That was men judging them wrongly, if you would. But guess what? They have been rewarded by God because their true reward is to be with God. Okay? Okay, they're dead. Now, they, though the gospel will preach to those who are dead, but they have been rewarded by God. Because guess what? They're with God now. Nobody going to talk about them anymore. We're God now. Nobody going to dog them out anymore. They're with God now. So he, he, he included that as an encouragement to what they were going through. It, it could be tough now. It could be difficult now. But because you received the gospel, those who had received the gospel, they had friends, the relatives who had received the gospel. Okay. Uh, men judged them in the flesh, dogged them out. But listen. They live according to God in the spirit. They are at home with Jesus Christ and, and God, okay? So it, it's going to happen. Um, people are going to look at you funny when you're living for the Lord. They they'll, they can badmouth you because you're living for the Lord. They can mistreat you because you're living for the Lord, but that's because you're living for the Lord. So expect that. Expect that, that people will turn on you because you're not running the way they ran anymore. People who put you down because you're not living the way you used to live with them. That's part of the process. That's part of what we have to deal with here on earth. Okay? But understand that when you do that, you are doing what God would have you to do. You're suffering being persecuted for doing good, for living the way God would have you to live. That's important that you remember that. Um, uh, God's goodness is not about him keeping stuff away from you. God's goodness is about him keeping you when the stuff comes at you. Remember that. Okay. All right. So let's, let's move a little bit further. Let's move a little bit further. So he, he, he talked... Now watch this. He talks about um, our lives as believers and how people come at you uh, as a believer. You're going, you're going to suffer. Um, that uh, there'll be difficulties in life. Okay, but then he makes a little shift here. I want, I want to bring this out. He makes a shift. Let me show you the shift. Okay. Then, when you get down to one and eight, um, one and eight, it says. Um, and above all things, have fervent love. I'm sorry, one and eight. Where am I at? Oh, I'm sorry, eight through eleven. I'm sorry, I'm 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 skipping all over the place. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, he says in uh, verse seven. I'm rolling my screen down too far. Verse seven. I'm I'm gonna get together here. He says, uh, but the end of all things are is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Now, now, now uh, he, he's already talked about uh, how non-believers are going to treat you. He's talked about how those who have died in Christ, mistreated by non-believers, but they, they've been judged rightly by God. They were God now. But he says here in verse 7, keep an expected attitude towards Christ's return. Now, listen to this. Listen, listen to this. Um. They believed Christ was coming back at any time. As a matter of fact, when Paul talks about in the last days, Paul believed they were living in the last days. There was stuff going on. So the apostles preached with an urgency that Christ was coming at any time. As a matter of fact, when Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica in the first, first letter that he wrote, he had to address that same thing because uh, believing that Christ was coming back at any time, some of them had got lazy. They stopped working. They said, well, I don't need to work because Christ come back. So they, which was, was uh, he had to correct that. He said, man, don't work, you don't eat. Christ could back at any time, but you still keep working until he come back. Anyway, they were looking for Christ to come back at any time. They preached that urgency, okay? But he had not came back yet. He had not came back yet. So um, he here he talks to them about, listen to this, staying prayerful, staying prayerful. Listen to this. Here, until he returns, staying prayerful, uh, be disciplined, sober-minded, and alert in your praying. Listen, why is this important? Because you're waiting for him to come back and you're suffering. 
your suffering. So stay prayerful that you will be vigilant looking for his return. Stay prayerful that the suffering that you're going through will not have negative a negative effect on your lifestyle. You see, when you're suffering uh, and the enemy's coming at you, what the enemy wants you to do is quit. He wants you to give up, give in, and give out. Okay? But what happens in prayer is prayer, listen to this, replaces self-focus with a God focus. In other words, praying to God uh, helps us because we're looking at him and not just looking at the situation. Okay, it's, it's a focus shift. It's a focus shift. Get your eyes on God. God God's going to help you in the situation. So yes, pray. Pray. That's why Paul said when stuff come at you, pray with thanksgiving. He said pray. When anxiety comes, he says pray. And what's going to happen? Uh, when you pray and you let your request be known to God with thanksgiving, he said God's peace which passes all understanding. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Well, when stuff comes, listen, 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 this is uh, 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 uh. Um, anxiety, persecutions can cause anxiety. Persecution can cause stress. So you take that to God. Be, be, be watchful. Expect an attitude for his return. But you want to make sure that uh, you, you're keeping the right mindset and the right emotional being while you're waiting. So pray. Pray replace yourself focus with a God focus. Okay, this is what Jesus said in the garden to his disciples. He said, watch and pray. And he, they went to sleep. He said, you can watch and pray. So we need to watch and pray. Praying helps us. Praying helps us uh, to continue dealing with the suffering, the bad mouthing, all that uh, of people coming at us the right way. Okay, so keep an expected attitude towards Christ's return. While I'm waiting, pray. While I'm down here waiting, pray. You know, Lord, help me to stand. Okay, all right. While I'm down here waiting. Anyway, so now, when you get to verses 8 through 11, verses 8 through 11, I'm going to give you a general uh, a, a general thing here, then I'm going to break them out. Here it is. 8 through 11, keep the right attitude towards each other while waiting for Christ to return. Here it is. Keep, keep the right attitude uh, towards each other while waiting for Christ to return. Listen, listen, and, and let me put this up here. Then go ahead. When you're suffering, when you're not doing well, people, you've seen this, and you, you might have did this yourself. Hope you knew this. When people are not doing well, there's a tendency sometimes to lash out at other people. Not lash out at the people who are the cause of the problem, but just lash out at other at other people. Some of you might have seen that. They'll lash lash out at other people. Listen, um, uh, it's been said that hurt people hurt people. Suffering, uh, persecution can hurt. It could it, it could cause you pain. Okay, and so many times what happens then is hurt people hurt people. You know. Um, um, People in pain, people in people in physical pain, people in who are not doing well with infirmities of the body can also hurt people. They lash out. Okay, they 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 unload, as they say, on others. Okay, and a lot of times that can be to people closest to them, closest to them. And so be careful when stuff's not going well, if you are suffering, that you don't go into funny modes and people are rejecting you, that you don't go into phony modes on those who love you, uh, on, on those who care about you. Now, this is how he says to do it. Okay, so the general idea is keep the right attitudes of others while waiting for Christ to turn yourself. Here you go. Verse 8, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin. When you're going through, keep loving one another. Keep loving one another. Love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, that He quoted that from Proverbs 10 and 12. Love forgives over and over again. Love forgives over and over. And when, when stuff is, when you're going through stuff, your love can be messed with. Your love can be messed with. 
he says, above all, have fervent, fer fervent love one for another. Love is having the best of one loved in mind. That's what love is. And when we're, we, the hardships come and difficult times come, we have to keep others in mind that we want the best for them in mind. So you don't lash out. You don't go sideways on somebody else because things are not going well with you right now. Okay. Um, so he says, he says, keep loving one another. Uh, verse nine, he says, be hospitable to one another without grumbling grumbling practice welcoming and serving with cheer welcoming oftentimes they have to open their homes to people to come in uh, uh sometimes travelers or whatever but he says practice hospitality hospitality is about making people feel welcome it's about making people feel welcome they have um um, in some places or whatever they have what's called a hot hospitality whatever people feel welcome people uh, welcome in your home but not your people ought to feel comfortable around you without grumbling without without murmuring do it do it cheerfully cheerfully that's the idea there cheerfully now here again what you got is when stuff is going on don't let that affect your cheer don't that don't let that affect you not having a welcoming attitude. Dealing with people in life, uh, many times uh, what they were dealing with, and we see there even when people come to your home, hospitality make people feel welcome. Okay, without mumbling, without without grumbling, do it cheerfully. Okay, do it cheerfully. Now, so let me move on here. Then the last one. Remember, I told you why this is important because. When things are not going well, we have a tendency to um, take it out on other people. Don't do that. Love them. Love them. Practice love. We need to love each other. We, If anywhere there ought to be love demonstrated, it ought to be in the lives of believers. Love each other. Jesus said that this is a sign that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another, that you love each other as I have loved you. Okay, so we need to love each other, practice hospitality, and then here's here's the uh, the, the last ones, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave it alone. First Peter four, uh, ten through eleven. I'm gonna give it to you, um, then I'm gonna read it. We are to serve each other based on the spiritual gift we have. We are to serve each other based on the spiritual gift or gifts, gifts. Um, uh, what, what is a gift? Gift is a spiritual enablement to serve in the body of Christ. A spirit enablement, a spirit empower enablement is. Um, and let me just get what he gets here. Okay. As each of you have received a gift, minister to one another. You see that word? Minister to one another. Serve one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. What is serving is doing what's good for somebody else. That's what serving is. It's having the good is like love. See, if you don't love, you won't serve. Serving is not ever about uh, self-focus. Serving is always about other. It's like prayer. Prayer is not about self. Prayer is about God, focusing on God. Well, serving is about focusing on and doing what we can uh, to to help one another. And this and this, the gifts thing here is just about the body of Christ. Okay, so um, a gift is is the Holy Spirit enablement to serve in the body of Christ. So He's gifted all of us to be able to do something within the body of Christ to to help others in the body of Christ. Okay, listen, as each one of you have received the gift, minister to one another, the good stewards, good stewards, the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, uh, let him speak as the oracles of God. If you speak the word, if you speak, do it speaking from God. Okay, that could be teaching, that speaking, teaching. Uh, if anyone ministers, what, minister, here's the word again, serve, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. You serve, serve, do it. God, ability that God supplies, if that's in your giftedness, God's going to supply the ability 
that you need to get it done. If you're a teacher, God will enable you as a teacher, but you got to study the word. If it's encourager, exhorter, whatever it might be, I want to try to go through all this. God will provide what you need because he does it by the spirit. That's why I told you earlier that the gift is a Holy Spirit enablement to serve in the body of Christ, to minister in the body of Christ. Listen, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. All, whatever you're doing, however you're serving, however you're ministering, you're doing it to the glory of God through Jesus Christ. Why? Because when Christ was here, Christ was concerned about the glory of God. He was concerned about Christ, was concerned about God's glory. He said, my doctor is not mine, but he is who sent me. Okay, he said, I must work the works of him who sent me. He was, he was concerned about the glory of God. He said in Matthew, in the, um, when he was in, in the Beatitudes, he said, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. In John chapter 17, when he was praying the high priestly prayer, he said to the Father, I have glorified, I've done the work that you've called me to do. I've glorified your name. So his chief concern was about the glory of God. So guess what? When we're serving, when we're doing what we're doing, uh, I, in the body, I'm going to do it this way. In the body of Christ, we should be serving. But even when we're not in the body of Christ, uh, when we are living our lives, here's the chief concern, the glory of God. The glory of God. And then he says, To whom be the glory, listen to this, and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to my seat. Amen. So let it be. Amen. I'm through. Amen. I'm through. So you're going to suffer in doing good. But suffering in doing good is confirmation that you are, you live, you change your life. You, you're refraining from sin because doing good in this case is, is doing what God have you to do. You're refraining from sin. And when that happens, you, okay, you're going to suffer. There's going to be some backlash. But don't worry about it. God got you. God got you. That's part of the call. And remember in suffering, treat your brothers and sisters in Christ the way God would have you to treat them. And, and all of it, live a life to the glory of God. Let's bow. God, we thank you for uh, this time together. We thank you for this word to remind us that in this life, we will have trouble. We will have persecution because we're living for you. But that means that we are living for you. Let that be the confirmation. Thank you for reminding us, oh God, that uh, you called us away from the life that we used to live. That others will have something to say about it. But you are the one who rightly judges Help us to live our lives to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening or whatever the time of day might be that you are able to receive uh, this, this study. And remember, God's good all the time. And all the time, God is good.